Today we're going to talk about a very important topic, probably one of the most important topics ever. Today we're going to talk about signs that God is saying that you are on the right path. In other words, how to know that you're on the right path with God. So what are the signs? How would you know? Well, that's why I'm here. But before I get into this video, I'd like to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell to be notified when we upload a new video every time. God bless you. I know you hear this in every other channel, but hey, do well to subscribe and get steady supply of all the juicy godly knowledge that we have for you. If you just click the subscribe button and also the notification bell, you definitely will be the first to know when new content is uploaded. Okay, now let's get back to the video. There's one person I love so much in the Bible. And that's King David. The way he expresses himself, the way he loves up on God, the way he's so direct about what he wants, the way he doesn't hesitate to serenade God and reassure God of his love for him. Now, I am not surprised that God loves him so much and he said the sweet things that he said about him. Hey, you can't blame him. God has feelings too. In Psalms 101, David told God something. Now, let's see what it is. He said, Lord, I will sing about your faithful love for me. My song of praise will have your justice as its theme. I'm trying my best to walk in the way of integrity, especially in my own home. But I need your help. I'm wondering, Lord, when will you appear? I refuse to gaze on that which is vulgar. I despise the works of evil people and anything that moves my heart away from you. I will not let evil hold me in its grip. Every perverse and crooked way I have put away from my heart, for I will have nothing to do with the deeds of darkness. I will silence those who secretly want to slander my friends, and I will not tolerate the proud and arrogant. My innermost circle will only be those who I know are pure and godly. They'll be the only ones I allow to minister to me. Because there's no room in my home for hypocrites, for I can't stand chronic liars, those who flatter and deceive. So David was quick to let God know the things that he intends to do so as to keep a good relationship with God. And that was one way to God's heart, staying on his path, the right path. One of the main signs, which is the first sign that you're on the right path, is the fact that you are willing to walk in the way of integrity. As it says in Psalms 101 verse 2, you must be willing to walk in the way of God. Someone said something to me a few days ago. He said, you cannot buy integrity at the market. And that's so true. Integrity is something you earn by godly character and you preserve by that same godly character. You cannot be forced to have integrity. God will never say, my child, take integrity. No. Oh. So the very first way to know that you're on the right path is that you know within yourself that you're willing to walk in integrity. The second sign that God is saying that you're on the right path you should feel at peace with your spirit. There are certain times that you just know that something is off. Your spirit is irritated and you just don't want to do anything productive. You just want to be left alone and you feel so disorganized. Yes, that's not being at peace with your spirit and it's a serious spiritual indication that you might be doing something wrong and the spirit of God is showing you signs to abstain from such action. He's showing you signs to abstain from such actions, thoughts, and all these other things. The third sign is when you despise works of evil. As a child of God who is on the right path with God, it should be an automatic disapproval of evil whenever you come across anything that doesn't glorify God. Now this is another way to know that yes, your heart is in the right place with God. Psalms 101 verses 3. Now it says, I refuse to gaze on that which is vulgar. I despise the works of evil people and anything that moves my heart away from you. I will not let evil hold me in its grip. Now David said, Lord, I won't look at anything vulgar, anything that makes an explicit reference to sex or bodily functions, coarse and rude. He straight up despised evil, not because he was holier than thou, but because he was a man who was willing to walk in God's path, the right path. So another way to know that you're on the right path is when you begin to genuinely despise the works of evil. Another sign is when you do not want to do things that move your heart away from God. 
At that point where all you want to do is love up on God, worship Him, do whatever He wants, well, you put yourself last and you put Him first. Not for any of your benefits, but just because you want to please Him. Yes, at that point, you, my dear friend, are in love with God. It moves from, Lord, do this and that for me, and it becomes, Lord, what and what can I do for you? You want to abide by every rule that God has laid down, not because they're easy to follow, but because you are sold out to Him. Still on Psalms 101 verse 3, he says, I refuse to gaze on that which is vulgar. I despise the works of evil people and anything that moves my heart away from you. I will not let evil hold me in its grip. So look at the later part of this scripture. It says, I despise the work of evil people and anything that will move my heart away from you. Now this is being totally sold out to God. This is being on the right path with God. The fifth sign. You are willing to amend your ways for God. Another way you know that you're on the right path with God is when you're willing to drop old habits and old ways that do not glorify the name of God. Psalms 101 verses 4 says, Every perverse and crooked way I have put away from my heart, for I will have nothing to do with the deeds of darkness. The habits that a child of God shouldn't have, things like gluttony, lies, cheating, stealing, backbiting, idolizing things, these are things that God hates and he wants you to stay away from them so you can be better for yourself. Fun fact, there's nothing we as Christians can do to improve God or make him better or to add to him. He's an all-sufficient God, so when he tells us to do anything, it's for our own good. Now God is God all by himself and there is not one thing you or I can do to reduce him or add to him. Now this emphasizes how much of a lover God is and how he's very intentional about us growing and being better for ourselves. And this brings us up to his standard. The sixth sign, you have compassion for souls and you love people the way God loves people. Psalms 101 verses five, it says, I will silence those who secretly want to slander my friends and I will not tolerate the proud and arrogant. In my last point, I establish how God is such a lover and a people's person that everything he does is solely for the benefit of us, his creations, and he still does it with so much intentionality. Now, this is also a way to know that you're on the right path with God. So when you want to see people grow, when you are a genuine friend who looks out for the people around you, you show compassion and kindness to everyone you come across. The seventh sign, you are conscious of the kind of company you keep so as not to contaminate your aura and flow with God. This is not to contradict the last point, but to even emphasize a point rather. The fact that you love people doesn't mean that you let them contaminate your relationship with God. The fact that you have compassion for souls does not mean that you should let people who still have certain characteristics and attitudes that are not of God influence you. So learn to love people from afar and protect your energy. Make sure that before you draw them close that you have total control of your mind and you cannot be easily influenced. Then it becomes a case of you influencing them and mentoring them into the proper ways of God. Now King David said in Psalms 101 verses 6, My innermost circle will be only those who I know who are pure and godly, and they will be the only ones I allow to minister to me. So the only set of people you will allow to influence you are those whose roots are strongly in God. The people who belong to your innermost circle, these people who are pure and godly. And the last sign, you do not condone sin in your circle and friendships. There's no room in my home for hypocrites, for I can't stand chronic liars who flatter and deceive. So the people you allow into your inner circle should be pure and holy people because we know that evil communication corrupts good manners. Now this is a way to know that you're on the right path of God and this is also a way to maintain that path. The people you allow into your inner circle should be pure and holy people because we know that evil communication corrupts good manners. And this is a way to know that you're on the right path with God and this is also a way to maintain that path. So I really hope these points have been helpful and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and if you watched this video this far and you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And don't forget to turn on your notification button so you can get notified immediately when we upload new videos. And comment below what topics you want us to make a video on and let us know your thoughts on this particular subject.
God bless you and Jesus loves you perfectly.